All right, T. <laughs> this <clears throat> is the speed test that I just went and tested at speedtest.net on my laptop, which is plugged into the um, dynamic port on my gateway from my ISP. That Xbox Live is currently unavailable social and gaming. That here, just stare at the ceiling for a minute. <clears throat> that is Xbox having a problem at Microsoft's end, and I'm currently buggering a network. Uh, test so bear with me because my primary means of focus you fuck seriously is the lens smudged Detailed network stats. Come on. Fucking check in appropriately. Anyway, if it'll fucking focus correctly, right here, where my finger is, camera, not the reflection on the damn screen. Focus, you fucking twat. Upload speed 1.49. Downloads fine, latency's fine, packet loss and everything's fine. <clears throat> mm. That's all fine. My primary means of testing my speed is as I'll go in into my console. And go and get my detailed network statistics. <clears throat> so. I have a report from my console saying my upload speed is one tenth of what I'm paying for. <laughs> and I have speedtest.net saying, dude, your shit's overclocked. That lets me know, because I've already gone through and called my SP and looked at it, that it's Microsoft's end that's buggering off, has been for the past uh, week. Well, that stands up to scrutiny. Especially with the the hack that allegedly happened with uh, Cyber Bitch seventy seven. <sniffs> Maybe Microsoft's getting fucked over right now. We won't know until there's an official statement released. Well, that's if more than one person is having this upload speed issue. And given that my download speed is what I'm paying for, latency and packet loss are well within acceptable parameters for average use. And given that the speed from my laptop to uh, speedtest.net's uh, server says, dude, your shit's overclocked. <sighs> Given all of that information,
I lost track of where the fuck I was going with this. Oh. Another point. Uh, what was it? Uh, five days ago? I started to have a problem with Twitch. No, it wasn't five days ago. It was roughly three days ago. And the Twitch app being extension of service on Xbox Live. Yeah, I should have put two and two together then and came up with 16. Usually, uh, when I'm doing a stream test, you know what, fuck that, I'll go into fucking Twitch's thing uh, momentarily, here, stare at the, stare at the floral pattern on my bed, <coughs> really close up, to the point where you can see individual atoms. I'll show you what I'm talking about, what I'm whinging on about. I'll go and do the, um, test it on twitchy, twitchy, twitchy. If you heard that popping sound, that was my neck. I can hear the broadcast. Alrighty. This bit right down here, it says bitrate, if it'll fucking focus in on it. Come on, yeah, get you focus the fucking. Click on automatic and it goes broadcast quality test. Yeah. What are you gonna tell me? It's gonna tell me my bitrate is 1056. At a resolution of 360p. That's what I've been dealing with for three days. <coughs> Usually, the stream resolution says it's at fucking 1080 or higher. Usually. Fucking, what is the highest? It'll give me 1080. Yeah, usually it says it's full on 1080p. 360p is the lowest it fucking goes. And my bitrate is usually roundabout maxed out. Which on its little thingy is, what is it, like 6,000 something? Just gotta click this button until my finger is sore. Yeah, 6,500. See, yeah, there you go. 6,500 is the max you can go. I go test it again just to show you I'm not screwing about. This is not my ISP's problem. There, it jacked it back down to 1,262. Stream resolution of 360p. <laughs> no joy rapture. <sighs> Says anyway. <sighs> Hang on a tick. Let me just bring up the good old Google. What is it? Uh, Xbox.com slash status. S T A T U S. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just. Uh, Friends and social activity. Current issues. 
Xbox Series XS, Xbox One consoles, cloud gaming, Android devices, Apple devices, Xbox on Windows, 360 web services. That bit right there, web services. Outage reported, what was 2.16, was that today? At 11.47 a.m. And they've been working on it since 3.24 p.m. Resolution is still pending. So, I've just got to bloody wait until they get it fixed. Then, my ability to broadcast will be back up to par with what I'm normally used to seeing of a bitrate of 6,000 something and a stream resolution of 1080p. Then I can get right back to being the adorable fucking idiot of a cunt that you all know and hate. Yeah, that about sums it up. So anyway, I might as well yammer on um, about, you know, internet connection. Well, there's two types of service packages that you can get from an internet service provider or ISP. You can get a residential package. You can get a business package. Me folks upstairs, mom, dad, sister, they've got a residential package. <clears throat> I have a business package. Now, with a standard residential package, most people I've spoken with online are like, I don't know what I'm getting. Yeah, I'll just pay $30 a month for it. Guaranteed, that is a residential package. Now, differences between a residential and a business package aren't just the price. That's the surface level. I pay... Well, I don't pay just for internet. I have my cell phone service with them and this Samsung Galaxy A20 with a screen that wraps around the edges that I absolutely fucking hate that it does that. I hate the screen wrapping around the edges. It, it's a fucking gimmick. People are butt dialing each other and texting each other lewd and provocative images of their inside pockets. That's what a fucking screen wrap around on the phone gets you. Well, that tangent aside, yeah, you, you know the standard $30 residential package. That big bundaroo that includes internet, phone, and TV. That has a dynamic port set up. That means dynamic means changing or shifting. Dynamic is not so good for sending information from point A to point B. Point in case, if you had a dynamic mailbox for your house and you were constantly moving that mailbox, your mail is never going to get to you on time, is it? If, if you were moving your mailbox from one place to the next, the mail service is going to be like, dude, the fuck is wrong with you? Seriously. Why are you moving your mailbox? We can't deliver your, your packages, your mail... Your, your bills, your letters, we can't deliver stuff to you because your mailbox keeps moving. It's not in the same place. That's what having dynamic ports does 
to your hardware. By the time <laughs> um, someone sends you an email and it takes so long to get to you, that's because it has to be forwarded from your previous dynamic address to your newest dynamic address. Some of these dynamic addresses change hourly. Some of them daily. It just depends on which dynamic address is available at that time for you to use when you start up your system. Or basically your router uh, modem setup. With a business package, you have the option to pay a couple extra dollars. It's like, what is it? It's not even $10 for me. $10 extra to set up a static IP address. So that Microsoft servers for Xbox are sending information to my console's um, mailbox, basically. The information is always going to get there because the IP, the internet port, isn't going all over the place, back and forth. The numbers aren't changing. So my connection is stable. It makes doing things a lot easier. <clears throat> now aside from me paying, oh, what is it? A hundred and some odd dollars. Um, yeah, every year or so, they call me up and say, hey, you're eligible for a price decrease. And I've had two speed increases completely free. <clears throat> so I'm getting loads of download and upload. Not as much as some people. But within what I'm paying for, I'm getting decent connection speeds. So it's a hundred and something plus the phone plus the uh, static uh, port set up. I could have all four ports on the back of that gateway set up to be static. But I don't need that for my laptop. I'm not gaming on my laptop. All I needed one And standard residential is promotionary price of like $29.99, $30. Then after a year, that promotional price ends and it goes up to damn near three fucking hundred. And that's the point when most, most of the average morons call them up and like, Hey, yeah, my price went up. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah that price, that was promotional price. Now, I can get you a locked-in rate, and you can get this, this, and this, and these speeds. What, five years ago when I set it up, I said, uh, guys, I don't want a promotional price. Uh, I don't care if it's less money up front for the first year. You guys can just use the extra money to upgrade service packages across the area later. That's fine with me. I don't mind paying the extra bit up front. So, I went with setting up a business connection without a promotional price. I could afford it back then, e even on um, partial disability. Yeah, I manage my finances better than the average moron. Huh. Go figure. Even right now, I've, I've got it all managed out. The only reason I had to get a phone 
from my uh, ISP is because my previous phone died from how many times I dropped it and the, the connection from the charging port to the rest of it just broke and I don't have the tools to take it apart solder it back together it was cheaper to get a new phone than to repair the phone and because it's an older model phone that I'm using right now to record this video on it was a lot cheaper than buying a new phone to put my SIM card in even with the installation cost, even the cost of buying the phone, it was a lot cheaper. Buying a new phone would have run me like fucking $700. So, yeah, I could whinge on a bit more. I think I will. Now, if, if you do have, you know, even, even if you can't afford to get a business package and pay the extra, was it $5 a month? Legitimately. Hold on. I think I've got a bill statement. Where did I put it, though? Business internet, business wireless activation. Ah. My mistake. A static IP is eleven dollars with uh, Charter Spectrum. Still, well within reason. I'm not going to bother going into the, the dichotomy of the breaking down the, the reasoning behind the price for a static IP. And I only activated the fucking wireless thing on it because it acts as a backup for when the wired connection starts going in and out from an interference out on the line or an electronic interference from servers acting strange why that's because they're putting a an electromagnetic signal of it's a frequency it's like a radio frequency that they're pumping through the line that's why the inside of a coaxial cable is not copper it's got a copier insulation around it that's, uh, what is it, electroplated to it? I think it's electroplated to it. Anyway, the line inside that isn't solid copper. The copper's in there to help the signal uh, electrically, but it's not solid copper. They're pushing, they're, they're not pushing electrons through it, they're pushing a um, well, many different ways to describe it I can't say it's a radio signal it doesn't use the standard CB-esque radio uh, frequencies for the sake of argument they're pushing an electromagnetic signal through it instead of an electric signal through it. There's a bit of a difference. So me activating the wireless portion is a backup that helps push the signal through the wires. Now, the difference between a wireless signal on a 
business gateway, which is a different piece of hardware from a modem and a router. It's, it's radically different from business package and a residential package. Residential package, you'll get like, you'll get like nine feet worth of signal out of it. Mine, it's damn near 10 meters. Now a meter is basically three feet. Hold on, I actually went and counted how many feet or meters I was getting out of it. It was damn close to 30 meters. No, not 30 meters. Well, was it 20? Basically 90 feet. 20 something meters. Business package, one piece of hardware. Called a gateway. Residential package, two or more pieces of hardware. Modem router setup. Yeah, the wireless will help push the signal through the line and help stabilize it because it's an electromagnetic signal. But when you're pushing a signal through the air, the air is not a good conductor. It's a gas. And the amount of amplification needed to push electricity or an electromagnetic signal through the air is a lot more than pushing it through an ethernet cord. This is this is the thing I harp on. You don't even have to get an expensive Cat 7E with gold-plated connecting pieces like I have that cost roughly $20 each. You don't have to get that. You can get a $5 one as long as it's, how many meters is it before? One technician told me it's roughly 50 feet before you need a powered inline coupler that boosts the signal. Because electricity can only go so far through any conductor because of resistance. That's why you need amps to push it through. And it takes far less amps to push it through copper cabling, which is in uh, cat whatever, insert number here, ethernet cables. You can get an outdated cat 5E for $5 or less, probably less by now, and you can plug that into your router, modem, gateway, whatever, and then into your console, and you will get a far more stable, far more reliable connection, and better speeds upload and download. You don't have to buy a business connection. I mean, if you can't afford it, you don't have to get a business connection. You don't have to pay the extra money for the static IP. You can take five or ten dollars Go online at Amazon.com or Walmart.com or if Circuit City's still around, whatever. And you can get it like a $5 Ethernet cord and run it into your console and your modem, router, or gateway, whatever setup you have. And it'll be far better. I, back in the, the time I actually had that extra money to spare, I bought two of those Cat 7 with the gold-plated connectors. <coughs> and those things, those will last me as long as I'm not a fucking moron and I... As long as I don't throw them on the ground and walk on them. I've got them coiled up 
hanging on the wall so that they're not going to get trampled on the ground. So that they're not going to get damaged. And that, that'll last me. It's been two years now and they're still working as intended. No flaws in them. They'll last me... I don't know, 50 years? <laughs> if the world still exists by then? Basically, I honestly believe they'll last until the end of the fucking world. Because I honestly believe the end of the world is coming a lot sooner than in the next thousand years or so. That tangent aside, what other differences can I highlight between a residential connection and a business connection? With business connection, you'll put out nearly $200 just for internet. I don't have TV or a landline phone that branches off that. I don't have a bundle on it. So roughly $200 is my bill after the price of the service for the cell phone that I had to buy because my previous one was broke after how many years was I using it? Like five, almost six years of using it and then it finally just decided, okay, I'm broke. You dropped me too many times. The soldering's broke. <coughs> I know it's the soldering and the connection because I tried replacing the battery. In residential, if you get a bundle, what, you're going to be paying half of the price that I'm paying after the promotion period expires? Or maybe you'll be paying $300? For most of you who would be watching this, who are gamers, who care about that sort of thing, most of you, I'm guessing, you're not going to have money that you can throw at it and, and fix it that way. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say most of you are probably relying on a, an a internet connection that your parents pay for. So... If your console is within the same room as your your network adapter, your your modem and uh, router setup, do some odd jobs around the house to earn like ten dollars, and then tell mom or dad to you know take that ten dollars and get a uh, Cat 5 or 6 or 7 E Ethernet cable so you can plug it into the <laughs> the router modem gateway and, and your console whatever console you're gaming on <coughs> I don't know what else to suggest. But that that cable, that uh, that cat whatever number that you're going to get, that little Ethernet cable, you can just get one that's six feet long if your uh, console and your network adapter is in the same room. Don't use wireless. Just don't use wireless for gaming. 
it is utter fucking garbage. No matter how many gigahertz, no matter how many G's they're saying that they're pumping out, doesn't matter if it's 2.4 or 4 or 5G, putting an electromagnetic signal through the air degrades a lot faster over an extremely shorter amount of space as opposed to pumping an electric signal through a conductive metal that is specifically designed to carry that signal. I don't know how much more simple I can make it. If you got a residential connection and it's like, what, $30 a month? Get a Cat 5, 6, or 7E. Yeah, I don't need a notification every time something happens, sex box. If you folks can afford to get a business connection and an Ethernet cable, go for it. If you can only afford to get an Ethernet cable, do that. It will vastly improve your performance. As far as setting up a static IP, it's just numbers that you have to plug in. You will have to ask your ISP, whoever you go with, for the gateway, subnet mask, DNS 1 and 2, and what else? There's two DNSs, 1 and 2, a gateway, and a subnet mask. Yeah, those, those four numbers. And they'll be like uh, 10 digits long. And you'll plug those numbers into your console and in, in the settings under network options, under um, network setup. You'll plug those in. You'll type those in on your controller or keypad or whatever. And you will see massive performance increase. Up until the point where mom and dad decide to watch TV or use the internet. Then you'll be sharing the same bandwidth. I don't have that problem. ISP can send multiple signals through the bandwidth of the conductive coaxial cable. I get... I get my signal, which splits off the exact same physical line that comes in. It splits off, and the signal that's meant for me is the signal I get because my gateway is programmed to look at that signal and say, that's for me. And my folks, they get their signal, and their modem router set up says that signals for me and it ignores the uh, other information even though it's going through the exact same line bloody brilliant that they can do that that's something I found out when the technician was installing it almost every time that I've called a technician and had them come out I've learned something new I actually bother to learn all these niche little details so that um, in the event that that knowledge becomes pertinent or relevant or needed by anyone, I can say, here you go, here's all this knowledge I've acquired. It's a big stinking mountain of useless data, and these are the bits you're going to need because they're most important, and the rest of it, you don't really need to know, but it's nice to know. 
because I find it fascinating and I think it's nice to know it. Do I want to keep whinging on about this? Would you consider this whinging on about it? I know some people would. Go ahead and leave a comment saying, yes, you're whinging on about it. <laughs> Go be cathartic. Release the catharsis. And the satire. And don't forget, you still have my permission, as always, to call me a fucking idiot. Hopefully YouTube doesn't censor those words because I'm, I'm giving people legitimate, I'm serious about giving people permission to call me a fucking idiot. Context, YouTube. Context. I've given people permission. I've said they could do it. Let them fucking do it. What else is there? Oh, bloody fucking hell. If there's something I said and I didn't explain it well enough for you to understand, fucking say so in the comments. And as much as I don't really enjoy or want to, go in the, the, the description of the video and fucking use one of the links that, um, PayPal, Patreon, that sort of thing. Throw some fallacy credits at me. So I can just get drunk and do really stupid things in video games. I've got... I've got plans for SSN's Creed. One, two, three, and four. I've got um, I've got disc copies and I've got the digitally downloaded. I would play it from the disc, only the um, disc tray on my sex box stopped working, and I can't crack it open to repair it. I don't have the tools to do that, nor do I have the diligence and patience to tolerate attempting to do that. One subject matter at a video, dude. What the fuck is wrong with you? I need to stop whinging on about this. Till next time, Toodle Pips.